auto treatments. These things can either break or absolutely carry your next project. And I want to show you five of my favorite ones in this video. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. Do not forget to check out the everything pack. If you guys do not know what it is, all 28 of my custom made products that you get on that one purchase plus all future products free. So up first is the gradient mesh treatment. Start with your photo and head over to filter camera raw filter. This is where you want to make your photo black and white by lowering the saturation to negative 100 under the colors group tab. Then under your effects group, increase your clarity and texture for a more aggressive look. Play with the shadows and lights and you're good to go. Now under your adjustments, you want to choose gradient map with a darker color color anchor on the left and a similar lighter color tone on the right. Now select the gradient map thumbnail and head over to select color range. Click on this little drop down here to sample the colors and click around your camera so you find a mesh that you like and you're good with and you just press OK. Super simple and just looks really awesome. Now for more gradient fun, here's a transparent gradient effect, also known as blend if. With your photo or graphic already good to be treated, head over to your adjustments and choose gradient map. Make sure that your gradient map is inverted by having the color on the left hand side, then black on the right hand side. And if you didn't know for some reason, the left hand side is your shadows, the right hand side is the highlights, usually for gradient maps the more you know. Now you want to drag in the texture that you want to be overlaid and clipping mask the gradient map you just created to that texture. Then double click on the texture overlaid layer to open up your layer styles. Under blending options, hold alt to put the underlying layer white anchor and move it towards the left. This will end up revealing the highlights of the photo down below. Don't forget to split the other anchors to find something that you really love. But of course, once you're good with that, you're done. Next up is a ghost smudge effect. Start with your black and white photo and take your rectangle marquee tool and make a copy of a selection of the photo. Maybe split the face or like the body or something. Head over to filter, blur, and motion blur. Then set your angle to two at 85 pixels. Now go ahead and duplicate your blur layer, but this time we're gonna head into filter, motion blur, and increase the pixels to 450 and keep the same exact angle. Now go to your adjustments and add in your gradient map. Mine's gonna look something like this. Black, red, red, orange, and like a tealish blue. But then once you got that all sorted, you're good to go. Of course, change the color so you find something that you really love, but it looks pretty awesome and it's like super simple. Half tone effect is next. Super easy. Start with your transparent cutout photo and make it a smart object. Make sure your colors are black and white by selecting this little icon right here. Now head over to filter, pixelate, color half tone, and make the settings 6, 100, 150, 150. Then head over to your adjustments and choose threshold. Now you just want to make sure you adjust until you find a good balance of your highlights and your shadows. And once you've done so, control click on the threshold layer and your photo layer to select both of them. Control J to duplicate, then right click convert into a smart object to merge these layers together. Now select your layer and head over to color range. We will actually click on the drop down and choose highlights and press OK. Then with the selection active, we will click on our layer mask and this will make our cutout. Now, if your layer is invisible, just select the thumbnail of your layer mask and click Control I to invert. And then you're done. Ta-da! So if you ever want to, you just like add an image or a color behind it and just call it a day. Now for my last one, it's actually in Illustrator for like a really cool straight edge geometric I don't know what to call it. So start by dropping your photo into Illustrator. Then be sure to go to your windows and make sure we have selected invisible image trace. When the table ends up popping up, drop the preset down and choose 16 colors. Also, if 16 colors isn't enough, you can increase a little bit to kind of find more colors. Illustrator will now feel like it's crashing, but you're good. And once the image trace finishes, go to object, expand and press OK. Now highlight your image with like the direct selection tool and head over to object, path, and simplify. And you might have to click these three little dots to get more settings. Be sure to have your preview selected and click on the straight lines option. Then play with the position and angle threshold to have this really cool abstract shapes take shape. But of course, when you guys find those settings, you're good. It's just something like really fun and unique, whether if it's like you gotta like just, you, you, it's just a photo treatment. I have no idea how else to say it. I thought it looked cool, like illustrated like in some kind of way or shape or form. That's it. So with that now all being said, that ends my video of the five fun treatments that I hope you guys really enjoy. I don't know what the title of the video, but my hope is that you walk away with like two really cool ones. If like you don't mess with like the the, the, the gradient map one, the mesh one, I don't with you, just saying. Technically I popularized that. So if you don't like it, then like, so be it. But with that, Seso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys. Let much love, peace, enjoy your week.